<laughs> okay, let's get started. Um, glad to have you all here this morning. Today we are going to be looking at some verses out of Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 through 6. Uh, as you see, I have titled this message, Time, Talents, Resources, Desire, and Devotion. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Time, talents, resources, desire, and devotion. So again, we'll be in Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time together. I just ask your blessing on this message. I thank you for it, Lord, and just ask that you just speak to each of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. 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 Now, before I get too started in this, I just want you to know this message is to encourage all of us um, and just remind all of us a few things. So I, it's not to be a message that you walk out of here and feel condemned or anything, okay? It's a message to, for encouragement. So on to Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. Now, when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he fashioned the gold from their hand, uh, from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded cap. Then he said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Now to start, Moses had been up on Mount Sinai for almost six weeks at this time, receiving instruction from the Lord. And the people, as we just saw, became patient, and they were wondering what happened to him. And now they are wanting Aaron to make them an idol to worship. These are the same people that six weeks earlier made a vow to the Lord, saying to Moses in chapter 24 that we will obey the Lord and all the things that he said we are to do and be obedient. And that's what they swore to do. But now we see over the course of a very short time, they have decided to break their promise to God. The same God who delivered them in a mighty way from being oppressed and in slavery to the Egyptians for 400 years. And with that, the first thing we're going to look at in our lesson is time. That is in verse 1. Verse 1 starts with, when they saw that Moses was delayed in coming. Now when the people saw that Moses was delayed in coming down, now what we see here is the people had become anxious and irritated for Moses had not come back down from the mountain yet. Even though he had come back all the other previous times, he went up on Mount Sinai to meet with God. This time it was different for them. For Moses was not acting on their timetable, and this time they had become tired of waiting and felt abandoned by Moses and God. Have you ever felt that way, or God has abandoned you? Yeah. Well, you know, many times God, though, requires us to be waiting on him. Mm -hmm. right? And in the meantime, we should be patient and to be looking to see where he is at. We should be looking to see where he is at where he is doing a work. He is moving around us, he truly is, and he's moving around us and other people, in our church, in ministry, and yes, even in our own lives. And 
just because God does not move on our timetable, that does not give us an excuse to move on ahead of him or to be like the Hebrews in today's lesson and forget what God has done and rebuild. Look what it says in Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. When we're waiting on the Lord, we do. Well, I don't know, I guess I should speak only for me. I become impatient, wondering what's going on, what's happening. But then it says there, be strong. We have to be strong and let our heart take courage. Just wait for the Lord. Know that God's going to be there for us. Look what it says in Isaiah 40, verse 31. We all know this verse. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. That's right. God's timing is always, always perfect. He has been faithful in the past, and he is faithful now. And he will be faithful in the future. So the next thing we're going to look at is resources. Resources. And you know what? I wasn't going to share this story, but this is going to fit in with this real quick. Uh, years ago, when our son Matthew was uh, getting ready to go into high school, uh, I wanted him to go to the Christian high school. And, uh, well, we didn't have the money. But I didn't care. I was praying and trusting God was going to provide. And I just said, Lord, I said, I know you're never early and you're never late. You're always right on time. But would you please come through for us and provide early for me? And I'm not going to go into the whole story, but God did. God moved in a mighty way and he provided for our son to go to that Christian school. So it was a, it was a beautiful thing. So God provided those resources, and that's what we're going to look at next, are the resources, and that's in verses 2 and 3. Uh, at the end of verse 1, it says, Come, make us gods that shall, shall go before us. For us for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And then verse 2, And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. The people wanting an idol bullies Aaron into making them a false god. But Aaron needed resources to accomplish this task, didn't he? So he tells the people to give him the gold off their bodies. Give me your gold. Give them to me. Just come on, give them. Go ahead. There, but go on. <laughs> give them to the body. So where did the people, though, get this gold jewelry from? And you probably all know. But, you know, they were slaves, after all, in Egypt for all these years. And last time I checked, slavery doesn't pay very well. Right. But yet, these uh, Hebrews, they had all this gold, right? Well, look what it says in Exodus Chapter 12, verses 35 to 36, they'll tell us where they got this gold from. It says, Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. As the Jews were leaving Egypt, God puts it on the heart of the Egyptians to give the people their gold and their other valuables to them. Isn't that great? It was a mighty work of God, and now the people are taking what God gave them, though, and they're offering it up to Aaron to make them an idol. And God is the one who gives us our resources, isn't he? So what do we do with them? What do we do with what God has given us? Do we hoard them and only use them for the things that give us pleasure? Do we use them foolishly, many times driving us into debt? Do we make our money or our stuff, our things, a more of a priority than God? God gave the Hebrews a gift. 
restitution, you might say, for the hundreds of years of slavery they were in. But now just a little over three months after being free, they are taking God's grace, a free gift of gold, a free gift of gold. You know, Steve was in that business for a long time, long time where people brought gold into the shop he worked at. How was that, Steve? That was hard. Right? But Steve didn't get to keep it, though, unfortunately. But, anyway, so, but, you know, here God gives these people a free gift of gold, and what do they do? They have it made into a golden calf. And sin, you know, it always, always, always comes at a cost. And here in their rebellion, they gave away their gold, gold given to them by God. And if you read on further in chapter 32, and verse 20, you will see what happened ultimately with the people's gold. The scripture tells us that Moses came down from that mountain and he was not too happy about what he was seeing. And he takes that golden calf and he throws it into the fire and he burns it all up. And then he crushes what's left over into a powder and he scatters it on the water and then he makes the people drink it. <laughs> The Lord gives, and because of sin, the Lord took away. So let's all remember who our provider is and use our resources in a way that is always glorifying Him. Jesus tells us, you know, that we cannot serve two masters. Look what it says in Matthew 6, 24. Uh, or either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other, not serve God and man. That takes us on to talents. Talents, and that's in verses 4 and 5. And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is the feast to the Lord. We see here is that Aaron had a gifting from God. Aaron had a gifting from God. He had a talent for fashioning metal and building things. And like us, we can use our talents for either good or bad. And sadly, Aaron chose his for the latter. He used his talents to make the idol, and then he made an altar as well. Why did Aaron do this? You know, we can only speculate and maybe it was fear of the people and what they might do to him I honestly, I don't know and uh, I've read some commentaries and they don't really know either but we see from this verse that Aaron tried to justify what he was doing as he compromised in trying to please both man and God look what it says here at the end of verse 5 it says tomorrow is a feast to the Lord to the Lord. This verse is telling us that Aaron in his mind, in his mind, was making the golden calf as a symbol of Jehovah God. It was his way of walking on both sides of the fence, we might say, making an idol for the people to please them, and then announcing that this golden calf is an image of God. Aaron had a big problem on his hands, and I think we all know why. He was breaking the second commandment. Look at the second commandment. We all know it. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. So for us, what do we do with our talents that God has given and entrusted to us? Do we only use them for our own purpose, or do we look for ways to use them for God? We need to be careful, because like with our resources we have been given, we need to be generous with the talents God has given us. We need to be willing to use them as He sees fit, bringing Him the glory and not to ourselves. That's, that's a big one. That's hard for a lot of us, I know it's for me. And in using our talents, we can't just be using them for the world. We have to be always using them for the world. 
and then try to justify it by, you know, kind of fit God in to what we're doing. You know, it reminds me of an award show. You know, an actor will win a prestigious award, right? And it'll be for a movie that, you know, he has made that it, or was in that is just filled with just sex, violence, vulgar language, even using the Lord's name in vain. And then upon winning this award, at the end of their acceptance speech, what do they do? And I just thank God. Yeah. And I just thank God. Yeah. And I just thank God. Yeah. I don't think God's too pleased with that. We can't fit God into what's going on with that sort of thing. That moves us on to desire. That's in verse 6. Then they rose early the next day, offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. The people did not have a desire to please God, only themselves. And Aaron did the same thing when he allowed the people to dictate to him what should be done. Aaron's desire was in appeasing the people to make his life easier. Have we all done that? I know I have. You know, I just want to make my life easier, right? When really what Aaron should have been doing, it should have all been for pleasing God. And that's true for us too. Our desire is to be living our lives to be pleasing to the Lord. And sadly, the Hebrews in today's text were more interested in pleasing themselves and even celebrating their choice and turning away from the one true God who saved them. Look what it says. So they sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And it becomes easy to do when you don't want to be accountable. When you don't want to be accountable to God. When you only want to live for yourself. You know, and this is why, this is why our staff preach and our, all the other pastors we hear, teach here, you know, they take such a hard stance against some of the churches today who turn church into entertainment. Mm -hmm. If the people come to church to be entertained, then their worship becomes like the worship we see here, false worship, and God does not receive it. Matthew uh, 15, 8, <clears throat> Jesus here quoting uh, from Isaiah says, The people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me and that takes us to devotion devotion before Moses went up on the mountain he left Aaron in charge his devotion was to be to Moses and more importantly to God he should have been an example but he failed them both he failed them both and by doing so he failed himself and the people that he was left to be in charge of and the people, because of their lack of devotion to God, turned away, they turned away and turned their hearts back towards Egypt. The land and the people that enslaved them. Look what it says, tells us that out of Acts chapter 7, verses 39 and 40. Our fathers refused to obey Moses, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt saying to Aaron, make for us gods who will go before us. Devotion is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Aaron and the people had a heart condition, and when we are not devoted to the Lord, we too will be easily led astray. The Jews saw mighty things God had done. God's desire and devotion was for them. But they only wanted to serve God on their terms, not his, and only when they received something. Only when they received something. This is why it's so important that we are devoted to God, putting him first in our lives in the good times and the bad. For when we do, we will have more of a desire for him and to please him. The Hebrews in today's lesson gave God lip service saying they would obey and serve him, but then made an idol of gold and celebrated their sin after doing it. God showed himself to them in many miraculous ways 
that should have stirred their hearts to want to serve him and to serve him only. And as for God, and for us, God did the ultimate miracle by sending us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. He was the one who took our place dying on the cross, shedding his blood for the remission of our sins. So since he did that for us, our desire, our devotion should be for him. And if our desire and our devotion is for him, then we will be giving him our time, talents, and resources. And we'd be doing it all for the glory of God. In closing, let me give you a couple verses. Exodus 23, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. And then go on with this one. Be still and know that I am God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this short message, Lord. What we can glean from these verses. Lord, uh, I know, speaking for myself, I, I fall in so many ways and into these traps that we just looked at today, Lord. Forgive me for the times, Lord, I have not put you first. Oh, Lord, just to put that desire and devotion into our hearts, Lord, that we would just serve you as we should. God, may we just go forth today Lord, be a light that shines to a dark world. And Lord, not making compromises. Lord, to please people. But to want to just please you. So in Jesus' name we pray. All God's children say. Amen. Amen. Anybody have any support?